Welcome to Math with Mrs. Cox. We are on Chapter 8, Lesson 6, page 583 in your math book. This is where we're going to learn how to compare fractions. Okay, for example, number 1, find the lowest common multiple, which means we skip count, of the denominators of 2 thirds and 5 sixths. So denominator means the down number, the number that's on the under, down under the, the line. So we have 3 and 6, 3 and 6. So we can skip count 3, 6, 9, 12. And it keeps going. 6, we can go 6, 12, 18, 24. Ooh, I see the lowest common multiple, do you? The lowest common multiple is 6. Find equivalent fractions with the denominator of 6. So they uh, are going to change the bottom into the denominator of 6. So what we do is we times 2 times 2 equals 4. 3 times 2 is that beautiful 6 we needed to find. And then over here we have 5 times 1 equals 5, and 6 times 1 equals 6. The denominator is 6. Now we can compare the numerators. So we put 4, 6 over here, and then over here we're going to put 5, 6. And it's easy for us to see now that they are, have the same bottom denominator and we have made the tops equivalent, that we can see that they, which one is greater than or less than. Just gotta keep track of which fraction came from which original fraction. So we can see that 2 thirds is less than 5 sixths. So, Tyler, from our story, made a greater fraction of the goals. And here's what it looks like in a model. We have two thirds and five sixths. So we can see that two thirds is less than five sixths. Number Example two, number one, find the LCM or the lowest common multiple or skip counting of the denominators. Here's our denominators. Now I really like to stack them when I do these. So I'm gonna show you my way and then we'll do it the book's way. I like to go like this, stack them. Two can go into 10, about five times. And five can go into 10 about two times. Now whatever you do to, do to the top, you have to do to the bottom and vice versa. So we have to times that by a five and then we have to times this one by a two. So three times two is six. One times five is five. So now we can see we can Examine these a little bit closer. And so we can come down here and do five. Oh, that's supposed to be six. Six tenths is greater than five tenths. So we can say that three fifths is greater than a half. Okay, that was my way, stacking them to compare them. But you can also do it the book's way where you skip count five. 10, 15, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then there we've discovered that the lowest common multiple is 10, which is what I put over here because I knew that both 2 and 5 would go into it. And then they, here they have a model that shows. Three-fifths is greater than one-half, not by very much, but enough to be greater. 
All right, number one, guided practice. Compare one-fifth and one-third using the lowest common denominator. So, skip count. We can do 5, 10, 15, 20, threes. We can skip count by three. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. You see a lowest common Yep, that's right. So over here, we can put a 15 here. And what they understand right here is for 3 to go into 15 five times. So whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So you times the bottom by 5 to get 15. You need to times the top by 5, and that will be 5. The story here, to get 15... That 5 will go into 15 three times. So we times the bottom by 3 and then times the top by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Now we can compare them. So 1 third is less than, or excuse me, 1 fifth is less than 1 third. 1 fifth is less than 1 third. Got to make sure you keep track of which fraction goes to which original fraction. Okay, this is where you need to have a little bit of room to use this. Be precise. You compare fractions by drawing models or using the lowest common denominator. So it's up to you what you like to use. I prefer using the lowest common denominator, and I like to stack them. But you can use multiples as well, too. So I'm going to stack mine 3 fourths and 7 eighths. What's a number both 4 and 8 will go into? That's right, they'll both go into 8. So 8 times 1 equals 8. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 7 times 1 is 7. 4 will go into 8 twice. Whatever you do to the bottom, you need to do to the top. So 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so 3 fourths is six eighths, those are equivalent fractions, which means six eighths will simplify down to three fourths. And um, seven eighths works out to be the same too. So can you now see which one's greater now that they both have a common denominator? Can you see that just barely seven eighths is greater than the three fourths? Okay, let's do number three. Two thirds and seven tenths. Remember they both go into, hmm, sometimes you can even multiply them. 10 times three would be 30, because I know they both will go into it. Times by 10, times by 10. So that's gonna be 20 times by three, times by three, 21. So this one is equivalent to 20 thirtieths and 21 thirtieths. Oh, they're so close. That is greater than, so 7 tenths is just barely greater than 2 thirds. Number four, we have 2 thirds and 7 twelfths. So I bet they both can go into 12 nicely. 12 will go into 12 one time, so I times by 1. 3 will go into 12 four times. Whatever I do to the bottom, I need to do to the top. 2 times 4 is 8. And I can come over here and write these out to make life a little easier for myself. Ooh, I can see that 8 twelfths is greater than 7 twelfths in comparing fractions. Number five, I'm going to compare one third and five ninths. Nine and nine is a common denominator. Nine will go into nine one time, times this one by one. Three will go into nine three times, so I have to times this one by three. 
So then I can put this down as 3 ninths and 5 ninths. Then they're easier to compare because I can see that that one is greater. Okay, 1 fourth and 1. Let's see. Let me back up a little bit. Give me a little bit of room right here. 1 fourth comparing to 1 sixth. Let's see, I know they both will go into 12. They could go into 24, but I don't want to have to reduce and simplify too much. So I'm going to say 12. They both can go into 12. 6 will go into 12 twice times 2. 4 will go into 12 3 times times 3. So 3 twelfths and 2 twelfths. Now, can you compare to see which one's greater? Very good. Number seven. We have two fifths and six fifteenths. Okay, extend your line out. Find a common denominator. Looks like 15 will work for both of them. 15 will go into 15 once. So one up here. 5 will go into 15 three times, so I have to bring the 3 up here. Whatever I do, do, do to the bottom, I need to do to the top, so 2 times 3 is 6. Bring my numbers over here so I can judge these ones appropriately so I know which one is which. Oh, look at this. What do you think? They are equal. That's our first one. Okay, number eight, let's do two thirds and three fourths. Okay, number that both three and four go into would be 12. Four will go into 12 three times. Whoops, that was a funny looking three. There you go. Three will go into 12 four times, so two times four. 4 is 8. Okay, so I can put 8 twelfths over here, 9 twelfths over here. That makes life a little bit easier on figuring out which one is greater. Okay, 1 fifth. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here. And 3 fifteenths. I'm going to choose 15 as a common denominator. Okay, I'm going to write 3 fifteenths up top and 3 fifteenths right there. Oh, there's another one that's equal. Okay, let's compare 1 6 and 1 third. They both can go into 6. There we go, that's a little bit easier to compare. One sixth to two sixths. So this one is greater than. Whew, that's a lot of work. Okay, let's work on 11, 12, and 13. Find the unknown equations in the equations. Find the each unknown in the equations that shows equivalent fractions. Okay, so. We can see that 4 times 5 is 20. But whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So if you times this by a 5, 3 times 5 equals 15. So m is 5 and p is 15. Okay, let's look at this one. So 7 times something equals 21. I know in fact family, 7 times 3 equals 21. So whatever you do to the top, you need to do to the bottom. And I can check that because I know 8 times 3 is 24. So G is 3 and K is 3. Okay, looking at this one. K, 6 will go into 48 at least 8 times. And so I'm bent. Whatever I do to the bottom, I need to do to the top. So 
5 times 8 is 40. So B is 40. There we go. Number 14, the amounts of water four runners drink are shown to the right. Four. Who drank the most? Well, they're not equivalent fractions, so let's make them all equivalent. Let's see. We have a 10, a 4, an 8, and a 5. Let's see. Let's think of something. 10 won't work for both of them, all of them. Let's see. I bet 40 will. So we're going to do it by 40. So I times for each of these numbers to be 40. We're going to need a lot of room here. We're going to need to blow it up. Let's do that. That would be better. Okay, I'm going to put 40 here. 40. You may need more room, and that's okay. Okay, 10 will go into 40 four times. So I have to times this one by four. So that's 20. Same with this one, times by 10, times by 10, be 30. And eight will go into 40 five times. So I have to times the top by five. Five will go into 40 eight times, times the top by eight. And that is 24. Okay, now I can compare them a little bit better. So which one drank the most? Okay, they both have an equivalent of 40. This one's 20, 30, 25, 24. So it looks like Keisha drank the most with 30 fortieths. And I'm just going to put that I had her at 30 fortieths, which simples down, simplifies down to 3 fourths because that's what that original fraction was. See how you can put them into equivalent fractions to be able to compare them easily? Be precise. A recipe calls for 5 eighths of a cup of brown sugar and 2 thirds of a cup of flour. Which ingredient has the greater amount? Okay, well let's make them have the common denominator. Twenty four. Three will go into twenty four eight times. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Two times eight is sixteen. Ooh, barely the flour one right there was more than the brown sugar. So we're gonna say flour. It was barely one more. 16, a trill mix has a half a cup of raisins and two thirds of a cup of peanuts. Which ingredient has the greater amount? Okay, so we need to compare these again. So come over here and do a half and two thirds, stack them, draw the line out. What number does both two and three go into? Now you can times them, which is what I'm gonna do is six. Three will go into six twice. Two will go into six three times. Ooh, I can compare that. So this one's the raisins and this one's the peanuts. So the ingredient that has a greater amount is the peanuts. Okay, let's do the brain builders. Number sense. Jenny multiplies the numerator of a fraction by m. Okay, so let's say there's a fraction, and she multiplies the numerator by m. Numerator is the top. And the denominator of the fraction by p. Okay. To create an equivalent fraction, is m greater than? less than or equal to p explain 
Well, whenever we multiply in a fraction, whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. Number 17. Equal to the numerator and denominator of a fraction must be multiplied by the same value to create an equivalent fraction, which is exactly what we did up here. Number 18. What is one way to compare fractions with unlike denominators? Include an example to support your reasoning. Number 18, find the lowest common multiple of the denominators, which is what I'm going to do right now. 2 and 3 will both go into 6. That is the lowest common multiple. Now we need to make them equivalent fractions, which is what I tell you to do right here. So 3 will go into 6 2 times. So whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 will go into 6 3 times. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. There, now I can compare to determine which fraction is greater. So I can see that this 4, 6 is greater. So when I do this, I can see that 1 half is less than 2 thirds. Because 1 half is the equivalent to 3, 6. Let me write that a little neater. 3, 6. And 2 thirds is equivalent to 4 6, and we can see that 4 6 is greater.